the workbench tonight, I got a Yamaha Natural Sound Laser Disc Player, model CDV 1000. It's got a disc jammed in it. We're going to pop this thing apart and see if we can get the disc out, and then we'll take a look and see what's going on with this thing. Let's see if we can make it work. A uh, client that brought me this also brought me a whole couple boxes of laser discs. So uh, I can add some laser discs to my collection. But let's get the screws out of this thing here first and see what's causing this thing to stick the disc. Could be as simple as a belt that's uh, worn out. And then you guys will get a look at what a laser disc player looks like inside. I've never seen the inside of a Yamaha. Uh, laser disc before. I've seen Panasonic and I've seen Sony and I've seen Pioneer. I have some Pioneer ones and a Panasonic uh, player myself but I haven't seen the guts from a Yamaha so it'll be interesting to see what this thing looks like when we get it open. So there's a laser disc. For those of you who don't know what a laser disc is, laser disc was the uh, predecessor to CD and it was a movie that was recorded on this large 12 inch optical disc read with a laser. It's an analog format. Um, newer laser disc players, they added digital sound to them after they've been out for a couple of years. Uh, they all had analog sound on them as well as, again, digital sound on the later units. So we need to take a look and see why this thing is jammed. I probably have to take the bottom off this unit to get at the mechanism to wind the disc out so we'll remove the screws from the bottom here and take a look at this unit see what's going on now to the video files out there laser disc was considered the ultimate in video formats prior to the introduction of HD TV this is a standard definition format there we go but uh, as far as standard definition goes, it delivered the best picture quality that you could get. Look at the size of that motor. Wow, huge direct drive motor. That's because it's a large disc that we're having to spin up here. Here's our laser assembly here. And I'm just looking to see where there should be a belt drive motor somewhere in here that operates the opening and close mechanism somewhere. Uh, I might be able to just push it by hand here. There we go. If we push this by hand, yeah, we can lift this up, and there we go. We can take out the disc. So I just wanted to take out this disc to start with and put it away, as I don't want to um, damage it. That's Fern Gully. That's the disc that was stuck in it. It looks like it's a it's a it's a Fox video. It's a it's obviously an animated kids movie but now we've got the disc out we can plug this thing in and just see what it does show you guys the laser on this thing too it's it's massive there's the laser assembly we'll zoom the camera in so you can see that that's that's the laser assembly for this unit plug it in and see what it does if it does anything Now earlier Laserdisc players actually used a neon, I think it was a neon argon laser in them, but the more modern ones all use a solid state laser like a, like a uh, CD player or a DVD player. So we have a belt that's broken. Okay, I can see right here. The belt that's broken is actually goes up front here, it's missing. You can hear the motor spinning, here's the belt here. There'll be a pulley down here to operate. Yeah, there it is, so let's just see if I can find a small belt to go around that pulley. I do have a couple small belts, whether I've got one that's gonna be the right size or not, that's another story. And of course they did make it a difficult place to get at to replace it. Uh, sometimes I think these engineers uh, they didn't consider, when they built these devices, they didn't consider what the repair guy was going to have to go through when it came time to replace components here. Let's just see if we can slip this belt in. I'm going to have to maneuver this around so I can see it. Let's 
See if we can get this belt in place. I don't even know if this is the right size belt that I've got here. But we're going to try. See whether getting this belt in will make this thing work. If I can get this belt to slip over the pulley, it might be the right size. If I can get it over there. Like that. There we go. There. That might just do the job. You guys might be seeing this thing work pretty quick here. There it is. Let's uh, plug this thing into a, a monitor and we'll see if it works. It's got a video out, a mono audio out, plus left and right outputs. Now, I just only disc I've got handy here is this one that was jammed in it. So let's just put this disc in and see if it will, will play. bearing is screeching. We gotta do something about that. That is that is almost unbearable that noise. So we're just gonna take the screws out of the top of this disc clamp here and see if we can lubricate the the disc clamp assembly. What happens is the grease just gonna take the disc out of here and put it away so it doesn't get damaged for the moment. Close this up. What happens is the grease here dries up on this little bearing here and you get that horrendous screeching sound. So we're just gonna clean that up We'll put some of the yellow molly coat grease in there. That's the proper stuff to um, keep the noise in check. I'm just going to get a Q-tip so we can wipe out this residue from here, the dried grease. That's got to be cleaned up. Okay, we've got our Q-tip. We'll clean out the, the dried grease. from the top of the bearing and from the disc clamp here. We'll also clean it off a bit with some alcohol. As you can see, it's, uh, it's pretty dirty. We'll dry it and we'll re-lube it with some molly coat grease. Okay, now we can take this piece. I'm just going to open the compartment up so that the clamp is not seated. Attach the screws again to the disc clamp. And once again, we'll load our disc. And you'll see, if I bring it up to the monitor here, it'll start to play the disc. Well, we're having a bit of a tracking problem here. So we still have something to work on, but hey, it's working better than it was a minute ago when it wasn't doing anything. Okay, now it's playing. I just, all I did was I just took the disc out and reseated it. I think maybe my my clamp when I put the screws down into the clamp one of them wasn't wasn't tight enough and there we go it's playing 
and we'll have sound on here. So I'm not going to show you any of the the the, um, the movie here because obviously we'll be in violation of uh, YouTube's uh, copyright policy here. So I'm going to pan away from the screen there at that point. But there it is, the laser disc player is playing. This also plays a format called CDV, which stands for CD Video. And I just so happen that I have two CDV discs. I'm going to go find them and play that, show you what a CDV is. So we can just open this up here. Watch how long this thing takes to spin down. It actually has brakes that it puts on to slow the disc down. So laser discs themselves, they were two-sided. So record or the movies came on two sides. You had to flip them over part way through the disc. This is side two that we see here, the playing surface for side two. Side one's on the bottom. The laser reads from the bottom and it reads from the inside out, just like a CD. I'm gonna go find that CD V, which is not to be confused with a video CD. Totally different system. I'm gonna find that CD video and we'll show you what they look like. At first look, Everybody knows who this is, Robert Craban, Smoking Gun. Everybody thinks, you know, you look at this, it's a CD, right? No, it's not. This is a CD video. And what a CD video was, was it was basically 20 minutes of audio, or up to 20 minutes of audio, and up to 5 minutes of video. And this is what they looked like. They were gold. The first 5 minutes of the disc, was this case is NTSC, was the... Five minute video for the for the video Smoking Gun. Plus then it also contained the audio tracks. Now if you put this into a CD player, actually if I remember correctly, the audio was on the inner tracks is what it was. The first 20 minutes was audio and then the outer uh, region of the disc was where the video was stored. So if you put this disc in a CD player, it would play the four audio tracks and then stop. If you put this into a video CD player, which is what this is, or CD video player, sorry, not video CD. Video CD is a different system. Video CD is digital video, MPEG-1 encoding. This is analog video recorded onto a five inch CD. So let's open this thing up and you'll see how this thing works. So I'll open this disc player up and I'll place the disc there, close it up, the laser is going to move into position, it's going to recognize this as a CD video, on my monitor it tells me that there's four audio tracks and there's one video track and it's going to start playing the video. And it's going to play the video of smoking gun. I'm going to turn it down so we don't hit, have a copyright problem here. And that's the, uh, that's the player playing. It'll play the video. Again, the disc is spinning at a very high speed. In this case, this disc is really screaming. It is spinning at about 3600 RPM. So this thing is just flying. The the quality, though, of the video coming off this thing is just incredible. Like, this is a full broadcast quality picture. I mean, it's unbelievable, this, the picture quality here. On the front of it, it tells me it's playing track number five, and the little CDV light is lit up. I don't have the remote control for this thing, so I, I can't even, uh, you know, this is one of the dumbest players I've ever seen. Who in the right mind brings out a player that has no controls on it other than the button to open and close the door? Look at this. You know, for the kind of money that Yamaha would have charged for this thing, and this would not have been a cheap player, this is this is probably a thousand dollar player when it was uh, new, you would have thought that they would have put more in a power button than an open-close button on it. Unbelievable! How stupid! You know, so if you lose the remote control, or the remote control gets eaten by your German Shepherd, or your pit bull, you are booched. You're, you can't use it. I never find a remote for this thing now, so this player, even though it's now mine, uh, it's not really much use to me. I guess for playing, I can play, I can put a disc in and it'll automatically play, but as far as being able to search for something, forget it. It isn't going to work, but hey, the player works. And uh, 
the nice big collection of, of movies that I was given. I was given two boxes full of movies to go with this thing. Um, will keep me busy for hours. This is not my only laser disc player. Uh, I do have several others. I have one that also will play not only uh, video CDs, but it will also play DVDs. This one here, this one will play Laserdisc, CDs, and CD videos, which is what this is. Uh, I have one that will play Laserdisc and video CD, or CD video, sorry, not video CD, CD video and DVDs. And then most DVD players would play DVD and video CD and some of them would play Super Video CD, which was a, a higher resolution. Video CD was a very low resolution. It was, it was lower quality than VHS. Um, digital video with MPEG-1 compression. And then Super Video CD decreased the recording time from 76 minutes to about 50 minutes, went to MPEG-2, but delivered VHS type quality. That was uh, Super Video CD and then DVD was on a DVD media. Video CD, Super Video CD didn't really take off very well in North America. I know that over in some countries uh, Video CD actually did quite well um, in a few of the uh, more Eastern countries of the world. I believe in China and India it was the countries that uh, Video CD did quite well. But it never really had much of a, a market over in North America. DVD dominated. Anyway, that's a basic look at a Yamaha CDV 1000 Laserdisc player. I'll catch you in the next video. And just as this thing ends here, it's going to go. 1986, that's when that was made. I saw the copyright. It should. Yeah, there it goes. Now it's going to track one. And now it's going to play the CD audio. The four, the four tracks of CD audio. Which is just the four songs that were recorded. Same song as we just saw the video for. But the audio only version for those four songs that were on the disc. And as you can see, the disc slowed down substantially down to the 500 RPM that uh, CD starts at. Anyway, there it is. Oh, open. Open Sesame. CD video.